it's uh, it's so wonderful to have Alicia and the family here. I'm just thankful for everything he's done for us, and he's just wonderful. There is a word that's so dear to my heart. It's brought light to this dark, dreary soul. For without it, my end would be pain and despair. In God's city, I'd never behold. When old Satan once held me so firm in his prison, I'd never get out, so it seemed. Till one day I heard footsteps down the hall of that dungeon, and a voice cried, I've come to redeem. Redeem the best thing I've ever heard. I've been brought here from there by that precious word. I'm free, I'm forgiven, I'm washed and I'm clean. Jesus bought me, thank God I'm redeemed. Oh, how Christ loved us, so much he was blessed. He died on that old rugged tree. His blood was my payment, now free forever. I'm His now, thank God I'm redeemed. Redeemed the best thing I've ever heard. I've been brought here from there by that. Precious word, I'm free, I'm forgiven, I'm washed and I'm clean. Jesus bought me, thank God I'm redeemed. There is a word that's so dear to my heart, it's brought light to this dark, dreary soul. For without it, my end would be pain and despair In God's city I'd never behold When old Satan once held me so firm in his prison I'd never get out, so it seems Till one day I heard footsteps down the hall of that dungeon and a voice cried I've come to redeem redeem the best thing I've ever heard I've been brought here from there by that precious word I'm free I'm forgiven I'm washed and I'm clean Jesus bought me thank God Precious word, I'm free, I'm forgiven, I'm washed and I'm clean. Jesus bought me, thank God I'm redeemed. Heavenly Father, as we come before these, we thank you, Lord, this morning for your grace and your mercy. Lord, I Realize what you've laid on my heart, Lord, and it does weigh on, but Lord, it's your will, so I want to be obedient to you. So Lord, I just pray that we all can understand and see what you have for us in this day and this hour. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, amen.
again, those that are listening, by the way, of the internet this morning, I just want to say that, uh, yes, the website is different, but it's a work in progress, and Paul is the one that's, I was amazed that he was able to do it in just an afternoon or evening, putting that together. I tried looking at it, and I could only go so far. But you have to give way to someone that that has the ability, like Brother Ray was saying about his brother, there's certain things you have to allow them to do their work. You work with them and praise the Lord. That's how it is in the body of Christ as well. So praise the Lord. I know we've been on this, these two parables for now, been in and out of it but for a, for a month or so. And what we have here, we show the grace age of time. But in this, these two parables of Matthew 25, 14 to 30, and Luke chapter 19, 12 to 27, are parables pertaining how God would deliver revelation to a people and where these two parables really apply. Yes, we can pull certain things and present in a certain way, but this morning I want to look at it in really in its context, how it is really exposed as Jesus speaks about it. We have a knowledge and understanding in this hour, according to Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26. It talks about the light of one day, but at the end time, it would be sevenfold that of one day. That's when the towers would fall. And that's not speaking about the twin towers. It's speaking about the day of the coming of the Lord. When that program, when God's program has come to completion, this bride will have sevenfold light, what the early church had. That does not give nobody a leg up or better than the early church. We need everything that was there, but we definitely need the things that we have here in this hour now. To begin with, here in Matthew 25, if you want to turn to it, For the kingdom of heaven, in verse 14, is as a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Well, we know the one traveling to a far country is none other but the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And he's going to deliver some goods. No, there's no dollars or kroners or anything coming out of heaven that God is is going to be giving. The only thing that can come out of heaven or that country is the word of God himself. It's not the word that's already on ground has been in past days. But he's, if he's delivering something, he's delivering something new. In other words, what we would call today fresh meat. And so therefore, and he calls his servant to deliver unto them his goods. And as we go down through the parable, these goods are given to servants. It's where God, as the Lord has given them, in, like in verse 15 says, and unto one was given five talents, and to another two, and to another one, but every man according to his several ability. Not the ability the person wants, but God's seen the ability of who he's giving these gifts to. In other words, fresh revelation. He's given them a message that was delivered to them. When Jesus came the first time, 
He delivered salvation by grace. The grace age was to be opened. It set a platform for those early apostles. But then, he says he came and he gave his goods. He came, sorry, far traveling to far country and delivered his goods. And he delivered his goods. So, unto the one that has five talents. Now, time-wise, looking at it in this way, once God has dropped in, the revelation in that early church, or, or when Jesus was walking, they, apostles, received the same word. They had received the message. And so they were given a base to start with. But in, the, in these two parables we're going to look at, the Lord is not just satisfied with just giving them the revelation that they were to carry. They all came out from that realm hearing the same things. But what he's talking about in these parables, he says, have you put these pounds to usury or to, to increase? So God was more or less saying, reading between the lines, he wanted that ministry to increase in revelation. And not everyone's going to receive in that hour received the five pound, but according to the ability that they had. In other words, it goes along with the five-fold ministry over in time. We're looking at the overall Ephesian church age. You had an apostle. There was always a lead apostle that God was using. And we look at Peter before God turned to the Gentiles. Then we look at the apostle Paul as he... He does turn to the Gentiles. But then as the other ministries rose up, they too were given a certain understanding of the revelation of the Word of God, and God was expecting them to increase in their revelation. Because as we read through the parable, I don't want to read the whole thing again, but as he's looking down through time, he's not disputing what was given to them, but he is disputing what have you done? Have you increased in more talents? Now, don't be distracted by the word talent, because if God's going to give something, it's not a talent to, uh, let's say, play the guitar or anything like that. It's a talent concerning His words, His goods, that's what comes from heaven. But He's expecting an increase. And in order to have an increase, then those servants must be listening to that voice. Now he's gone up to heaven, and he's speaking to them. And they would increase in knowledge and revelation of fresh revelation on ground. And a good example is the Apostle Paul. My, I would say if there's one that, that had an increase in talent, it would be the, that Apostle. It was given, it says, he's just using that as a type. You can only take the parable up to a certain point. It's a profile. So now as the Apostle Paul has moved on, he finds himself, as he's dealing with the Jews, there was other men that heard Jesus that was up in the ministry in that hour, they would claim, oh, we love Jesus, and we're from Peter, we, we've been into Jerusalem, and, and God was not looking at that at all. Not in this parable. If God was looking on ground and says, what have you fellows increased in? Zero. Why? Because there was a spirit about them that was contrary to Paul. Paul was God's, man's, was God's choice. And as Paul spoke, he didn't go looking, oh, I want to be the, the top evangelist like Billy Graham or, or a preacher. He could only minister the thing that God was giving to him. And that caused the situation to Paul to be in that position. But these others... 
from time to time would confront Paul or would confront the assembly. They work behind the scenes. They have no talents. They didn't grow in no talents. That's one point to identify them a little bit. Now, as we're looking at this parable, at the end of that parable, when the Lord comes, when He talks to that unfaithful servant, why was He unfaithful? He didn't see the necessity to grow in truth for His hour. And what happened to that type of individual? At the end, starting from verse 24, let's let's see from that point. Then he that received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew that thou was a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. Now, he's giving that response. The Lord is using those words to portray the atmosphere that was in that grace age at at that first church age. And his Lord said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Why was he slothful? He might have been running the road, going everywhere, preaching circumcision and whatever ones that was around at that hour. But he was slothful in listening to the voice of God in his day. And thou knowest that I reap where I sow not, I gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest. Now here's God's, the word of God is actually saying, it's not an option. Thou oughtest, therefore, to have put my money, or his, the revelation, to the exchanger, that at my coming I would receive my own with your three, with more. And if there's, doesn't come more revelation, then that's a slothful servant because he's not hearing the voice of God. In Hebrew, I'll just quote it from there. Chapter 12, verse 25. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not that refuse him from that spoke on earth, how much more shall we escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven. Now in the days of Paul, Jesus was not on earth. He was up in glory. And those that, ref- they were looking at the man and said, we don't like him. We don't want him to be ruler over us. He's not our choice. Paul, you're making something of yourself. That would be the buzzword that they would use in that day and that hour. Really, in one sense, they hated Paul because of the things he was preaching. And it's one thing to hate the man, but it's another thing to hate the word that comes from God. Because Jesus said one day, every blasphemy that can be spoken against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But if you speak from from what God is bringing at your day, there is no forgiveness. And what does the end result say? Therefore take the talent from him that giveth, and give it unto him which has ten talents. For every one that has shall be given. Given what? Of the message is already revealed? Should know that. Should come into that. We're talking about servants, not beginners. And he shall have abundance, but from him that has not shall be taken away even that which he has. And here's the outlook. It's a sad thing. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In There's a type set in the Old Testament. It's used as a type that plays itself all through time as God's Word would come on ground. And I want to, if you want to turn with it, it's up, it's up to you, but it's in First Samuel 
chapter 8, verse 7. Now, what I'm speaking today is very important. We need to see the underlying situation. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Samuel, Hearken unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected you, or thee, they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. Who is to reign over us? Who is our leader? The Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, that set a type in the Old Testament. And we can see it played out in the life of Jesus. The message of that hour before Jesus came, when He came, it was the Pharisees holding the Old Testament, and they were claiming to be walking with God, they knew God, but they hated what Jesus was preaching. And he says, you can hate me, that's fine. But if you hate the words that come from my Heavenly Father, then you're going to have to deal with my Heavenly Father. And the word he put on ground, now that hatred of that hour went beyond hatred just in their heart. They want to kill him. Want to have him crucified. Then we can turn to Acts chapter 5. Here's Peter. Because he's been, he received some, pa- some talents. And in Acts chapter 5, verse 30, here, it's written in the book of Acts, it says, The God of our Father raised up Jesus. Acts chapter 5, verse 30. And the God of our Father that raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hung on a tree, him has God exalted with his right hand to be prince and savior. Jesus is the one that's supposed to be leading. Because he's up in glory doesn't mean now it's a vessel on the clay is going to do the leading. It should be under the leadership of the Holy Ghost. And to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. Verse 32. And we were witness of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost whom God has given to them that obey him. And when they heard that, they were cut to the heart. It's the word that cut them. Maybe Peter might not have been an eloquent speaker. I don't know. But they were looking at Peter as being the source of the problem. But they couldn't see the words they were speaking was coming from heaven. And when they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. And there was Peter and the other other apostles there at the point in time. So this warfare between the spirit of Antichrist and the spirit of God, it becomes a warfare... When God brings a word on ground, there's some that just stays with the message that they grew up with, feel comfortable, live in there, and most of the time they're just rolling around in circles in that move. Whether it be in the days of the apostles, or even in this hour. Now, I don't know how long it's going to be, but hang on. As a place to start to look what's happening in this hour, we have to set some places where things are, what God has been doing. And when we read in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 25, See that you refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not whom refuse him that spoke on earth, that was Jesus, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Has the Lord been speaking from heaven 
all through the grace age? In new revelation? No. He did in the first church age till John on the Isle of Patmos in 96 AD. Things went downhill. Truth was lost. Then God started restoring truth that was already was there, but that's not fresh meat. But then when we come to this lead of the singing church age, God was now going to set in place and in motion by the means of a prophet. He heard one thunder that broke six seals. That was the beginning of the carcass. Because what is the carcass? Is it not fresh meat? Sure it is. Now the reason I look at 1963, because one thunder, that means God spoke. And so this, Matthew chapter 24, verse 28, wheresoever the carcass is, will the eagles be gathered together. And how we love to use that in every branch, every kind of, of offshoot. We're feeding on the carcass. Really? We're going to look at it this morning whether you are or not. He said, well, I didn't come to hear that. Well, I didn't want to preach this message either. But I have to. So this carcass started. Who initiated? God from heaven. He, one thunder. He spoke concerning six seals. The seventh one's not revealed yet. But then when did it stop with Brother Branham? No. Fresh meat has been going on all down through, and the fresh meat will not stop till the bride comes to her perfection. But everyone that opposes always oppose the meat that goes forward from their day. They don't recognize it. Oh, they love God so much. They do anything for God. Oh, uh, I don't want to displease Him. Little do they understand by refusing the fresh word on ground, they are marked. Oh, but they're, they're lovely people. I know they are. But as we look into this parable, before I get into the one I want to, we're going to look at Luke chapter 12, verse 37 to 49. Luke chapter 12. And after this service, we're going to find the true colors of those that are hearing from God or not. So in Luke chapter 12, we read this so many times, starting at verse 36. And ye yourselves liken unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding or the wedding preparation. Now when did he return from the wedding preparation? It started in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 where the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, a message, fresh revelation. And when that fresh revelation of First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, was to run all through the age of time till the bride comes to her completion. It never stopped. Yes, it's not every Sunday or every... It, it's on a regular basis. God knows when and how that meat is supposed to come. So he says, He will return from the wedding, and when he cometh and knocketh, and they open unto him immediately... Blessed are those servants when the Lord, when the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Watching for what now? Yeah, we hear the word watching, but watching for what? Watching for his coming. It's not the watch of the hour of the day of the Old Testament concerning the third watch of the day or the fourth watch of the day. It's concerning the watch concerning his coming. And Jesus is going to give a little 
inkling and understanding that this is not going to be done all for the first time because he's going to show something. It's going to be a second watch and there's going to be a third watch. Watching for his coming because the message would change from a prophet to an apostle to a fivefold ministry. All right. And I say unto you, he shall gird himself and sit down to meet, not past tense, already reveal meet, because otherwise he's done that when he came the first time. But now it's fresh meat. Hindsight is twenty twenty. But can you see and hear what's in on ground on your time? Then he goes on to say in verse 38, And if he shall come in the second watch, because remember, when we're looking at verse 36 and 37, that started with the shout. That's why he didn't say, where's the first one? You might say, well, where's the first one? That's where it started. It started right here. One thunder. Six seals revealed. Then he says, when he shall come in... Now he says, He's to, we are to watch. And if they shall come in the second watch. Why the second watch? Because there would be a second phase of people looking for the Lord's coming. Because Brother Branham didn't reveal everything. And God was going to have more revelation brought forth on ground. Now he's brought an apostle on the scene which is used in the terms of setting the motion to feed more servants. There's going to be a fivefold ministry now. Now we're going to go to the parable of Luke chapter 19. Before we go there, just looking at where, when the carcass started. All we can point to, oh no, it's over here, it's over there. You can have these naysayers that goes on there. All they're listening for is to have something to put over you. And that identifies them. Remember that message? The Word of God will identify you. In time, it will reveal what you are. And so in the days of Brother Branham... As God has used him in the latter end of his ministry to preach the words that he brought forth. And who was he preaching to? Who was it for? It was that net that he was bringing it. God had brought in all the religious world to come listen to a message. And they weren't just the drunken, the down and outer that he was looking for. He was looking for the leadership that was in the denominations of church. And when he starts speaking and saying, tongues is not an evidence. Oh, but Brother Bram, you don't have love. It starts cutting them in their heart. And when that did, at that moment of time, then start, things started taking place in their hearts, they saw him as a problem. Oh, we believe the miracles, but your doctrines is false. By saying your doctrine is false, if he spoke with one to thunder that reveals six seals, they're not speaking against the man. In essence, the spirit that's controlling them is speaking against him that actually spoke from heaven. It's, it was cutting them to the heart because, well, he's not like our denominational leader. He don't, he don't fit in with the crowd. We can't control him. God doesn't want you to, God doesn't want anybody to control his servant. And he can only minister what he has to say. But what he says, yes, it may look to some that he was trying to make something of himself. But all he could do was just preach what God was giving him. And yet, there came to a point where they thought they would, these that refuse, that don't like the word on ground in their day, 
they congregate together, walking, working through the back doors. And those 400 denominational preachers tried to get him, to, to pin him down on his revelation in Chicago. They were of another spirit. I don't care how holy and how well and how dedicated they want to walk with God. God was not looking at that says, because you're refusing my word for your day. You're judged. If they continue on to the end of their life. Now God can bring to a place where, yes, you may be caught up in something and then wake up and see the, the and stop speaking against what God is doing. So now we have that point in time. The second watch. When Brother Jackson, as Brother Brandon passes off the scene, all the servants of that hour in the days of Brother Jackson, they all came with a certain amount of pounds that came, the message that God brought through a prophet. And now as Brother Jackson was not trying to make something of himself, he could only minister what God was giving him. And this was irking those false servants. He's a blackbird. He don't conform. He don't like church order. On and on it goes. And in the background they get together and they try to put pressure. They would send tracts and so forth. But God's man is not deterred by the pressure of the things that's coming on ground. Isn't that what took place? And because they continue on speaking against Brother Jackson, they ended up spinning in circles because they only play with the message that was Brother Brandon brought. They will fulfill what we're going to look at in Luke this morning. Now we come to this hour. It's repeating itself again. You can speak against the vessel of clay as much as you want. But if it be God's word, you are cutting yourself off. There's in Luke 14, we'll find out. It says, But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to rule over us. They don't actually physically say those words. But he don't fit with us. We don't like his the way he preaches. They said that about Brother Brown in the denomination world. And so did the spoke against Brother Jackson of Brother Brown's message that they didn't like. They ganged themselves up. Oh, they use this and here's here's what what really gets me. Well there's a a spirit about it. In the days of Brother Jackson, that's what they were doing. And all they could say, well, he's a false, this and that and the other thing. But if you want to kill something false, when God brings a revelation on ground, it kills that false thing. But these don't have a revelation to do that. All they can say, well, there's a spirit involved. Yes, there is. The Spirit of God that's bringing the Word on ground and is testing you. Well, okay. Now, we're going to get into that parable. Now let's look at Luke 19. A certain nobleman 
went into a far country to receive a kingdom for and to return. Who's that nobleman? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. What is that kingdom? It's the kingdom of God. Right? So, but just looking at that point in time, we don't know whether where it is in the grace age. But verse 13 identifies it where you are in the grace age. Verse 13 says, And he called ten servants and delivered to them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. This is a warning and the next verse is a judgment. Now he called ten servants standing alone without what God has revealed to us in this hour. That points to you to Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 10. Five wise, five foolish. It's not just there's only five. God showing there was a direct proportional between the wise and the foolish. But among them would be the tares. The tares sat in the same ministry as Brother Jackson did. Because now we're into the second watch. Everyone heard all the things that Brother Jackson have, and then there's a ministry that's been rising up. But as it's rising up, we found out by this hour, not all those servants are true servants. They can crow as much as they want that they're walking with God. They have the word. They know what it is. But the only one that will know what it is is a true child of God that's listening to His word. And this bride's not going to be made by a committee to lead it. God's going to have a leadership in it. More than one. But at least there will be some leadership that will point this bride to what the word is for this hour in 2016. It started over a year ago. I could see the inkling of a separation coming on. And it's almost in full swing. All right, now we're going to go on again. So he delivered 10 pounds and he says, Occupy therein. Now, occupy therein doesn't mean, Oh, you have to stay in that and that's all there is. But we had to occupy therein of that message that came through an apostle so that when we go forward and God would speak, it would be hand in hand with that word. And if we have it occupied therein, you hear statements, well, he speaks things that simple people can't understand. And I'd say, what are you preaching in your congregation? We're not living in the days of sowing. We're living in the days of the final wrap-up of the bride. The bride has come into a certain revelation. Yes, there may be a one or or different individual that has come into the message, may not understand everything. And when we're speaking in the terms we're speaking this morning, no, they might not understand. But those that are mature, I'd have to say, what have you been listening to? Now, verse 14, I often wonder where that fit. He says, but his citizens. Now, remember, when he says occupy therein, it was to be through that carcass time. And the citizens, he says, but his citizens hated him. Not with a hate. Oh, I hate you. I don't, I, I don't want to talk. It's a hatred in the heart for what the servant of God is speaking. And his citizens hated him and sent a message saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. He's like an elephant in the room. He takes up all the oxygen. 
To you, it may look like that. But if it is God's Word, then you're on dangerous ground. I don't care how, how holy one may want to present himself. And who is this citizen? When I looked it up in the concordance, it's a citizen not in the days of Jesus. It talks about this definition of citizen is citizen of that country. And so what country is it speaking about? Is it the country of Israel? No. It's the country of the kingdom of God. We're all supposed to be citizens of God's kingdom. You understand? You see it. So in those that would should have been occupying in having those pounds to set them as a state to move forward, the Lord is Bringing in this parable, there would be those that would rise up and we don't want him to rule over us. Do you think Brother Jackson wants to rule over everybody? Do you think Brother Branham did? Brother Jackson, you shouldn't have preached what you preached because, you know, it, it upset the people from the Branham line. Think about it seriously. Now here's how the Lord is dealing with the situation now. And it came to pass, when he, was re- when he was returned, that's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, in the shout of the message. Not physically, but God has returned, Lord has returned in a revelation. And it didn't stop with Brother Bram, and it hasn't stopped with Brother Jackson. It's still ongoing today. And having received the kingdom, he commanded these servants to be called unto him. Not a committee. To whom he had given money, that he might know how much a man had gained by trading. If you have not gained in pounds, you're walking on thin ice. As a servant. Where are the pounds? Now he goes on to say here. Then the first saying, Lord, thy pound has gained ten pounds. Well, here in Matthew, it was on a one to one ratio. But here at the end time, there would be servants that would receive one pound, or revelation in the term of the occupying that message, and would increase tenfold. Not tenfold of the message that was by the previous servant that God used, like Brother Branham or Brother Jackson, but for their hour. He's not, he's, the Lord saying, the Lord more, more well, slow down, is more or less saying, where are your pounds? Don't you know that I require earthry? Weren't you listening to my voice? Are you just looking at a man and saying those things are false? Haven't your predecessors, predecessor done the same thing all down through history? Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound has gained ten pounds. And he said unto to him, well done, good servant, for because thou hast been faithful in very little, thou hast authority over ten cities. That's in the millennium. And the other came and saying, the Lord thy pound has gained five. So not everyone gains the maximum. Because there's a fivefold ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And the head is not to be controlled by the pastors, the evangelists, the prophets, or the teacher. He never, God, look down how he worked down through history. Does that servant that has to speak in that manner, does he want to have the show? No, he can only minister what God gives him. And if he don't, then you're so miserable that you feel you want to quit. You can't be anything else but what you are. Through the eyes of those that are naysayers, he's trying to 
promote himself. Well, either what's been brought is of God or it's false. And if it's false, use God's word by revelation to point it out. And I'm just saying there's just a spirit about it. Verse 20. And another came saying, Lord, here is thy pound which I have laid up. In other words, that was delivered to him. For I have feared thee, because thou art an austere man. Now, they were scared of bringing something on their own. Not that you bring it on your own, but had they wanted him to be led by God, God would have started showing things in the Scripture. Thou takest things up where thou layest not, layest not down, and thou reapest where thou did not repeat. It would re- not so. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Wow! He was delivered the same pounds as the wise servant. Why is God calling him a wicked servant if he had what's been delivered? Because he's refusing the voice that's speaking from heaven for their day, for our day. Thou knowest that I was an austere man, taken up where I have laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore, then gavest thou not my money, or the revelation, into the bank, and at my coming I might have required my own with earthly or increase. And he said unto them that stood by, Take from him the pound that he had was given unto him, and that, and that has ten pounds. And they said unto him, Lord, he has ten pounds. Verse 26, For I say unto you that everyone, that everyone which has shall be given, but from him that has not shall be taken away everything that he has away from him. But those are my enemies. Of verse 13, 14 I should say, which would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither, and slay them before me. That's the end result. Is it serious? It sure is. Is it just a one-man show? I believe there's more than one apostle. But like Brother Jack's message that we have played on, on our webpage, the body of Christ, number five, I think it starts around the 25 minutes or so. He says, when that five-fold ministry get going, there's going to be somebody to speak loud enough, forceful enough. God's, look, God's looking to use a head to bring the whole thing together. He's not looking for a committee of men working behind the scenes. Well, he's, you know, it's so-and-so. and he's, That's a beginning of an Antichrist spirit that's falling on people, and they should wake up and see what's on in this hour. Of all the things that God has opened up since 2005, this is a lot that rejects. And little unknown to them, and I've seen this played out through the years that I've been ministering, Every time you see God bringing in new people, there's some that's going to be caused to leave. And there's a new crop of believers that's connecting up via the Internet in different places of the world. There's a hunger that got started at the beginning of this year. I've never done so many Bible studies in all my life in a, in a short time. Did I go looking for it so I could make, build up a ministry? They asked. God will not force you to believe. So there's going to be some deep soul searching. In Matthew chapter 12, I'll just read it from chapter 12, verse 31.
Wherefore, I say unto you, all manners of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But there's one exception. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. Whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven. They spoke against Jesus. And God could have had them had those Pharisees or those that spoke against Jesus in that in those days, they could have been forgiven. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world or the one to come. Oh, but this blaspheming the Holy Ghost is talking about the miracle saying is of God and it's of is of that God does is of the of the devil. That's not what the blasphemy that is part of it. But it's the revelation of the word that cut off those Pharisees in that hour. They spoke against him that speaketh from heaven. And everyone this morning, you have a decision to make. Either you hear that you know it is from heaven, or what you're listening to, if it's something else, then go for it. I'm not going to stop you. I won't go there to disturb your congregation. I won't darken your door. I'm just satisfied and happy just to be here. Lord knows I've traveled enough in my lifetime. And then they use the word humble like the word like the world uses. Oh, the bride's going to be so humble. It's humble, it's not looking, for, in the term of the scripture, it's humble, not looking for fame or setting up your own thing. It may appear to some, as it appeared to what Brother Branham was on ground. It also appeared to those in the days of Brother Jackson, and it will also appear today in this hour. Why? They have a different spirit. Better get back on the knees. And know who's speaking from heaven. If you're labeling this as false, save yourself some trouble. Don't click on here. There's other things we could bring in. But how many see what's going on? It's God is not, yes, He is concerned on how we live our lives. We should never neglect that. But if I came to you saying, I'm following God so much and I love Him so much, I'm walking in truth, and, and I can't speak, I didn't speak any error because I didn't bring, I have no pounds really. You can't be held accountable for, like Ray says, if, I, if someone comes up here and never says a word, you wouldn't know anything about it. But there has to be somebody with a backbone, not a wishbone. And if you feel that here in Moncton it's whole false things, save yourself some trouble. Don't click here. There's many that are. Last weekend, there was 53 hooked up here, as much as the congregation here. Did I go around putting advertisements, please click on Moncton? Did I send out flyers, emails? No. If God's in it, He'll make us prosper to what He wants. And if God's not in it, Lord, I wouldn't mind just shutting that thing off. Let someone take the road. But there's something that moves you. I've been holding back for over a month. Because I can see now how that parable in Luke really fits.
His citizens that hated him didn't come from a bygone era of time. It's the citizen of the country, of the kingdom of God, that are claiming to be in the kingdom of God, that are causing the trouble in every stage where God was bringing fresh revelation on ground. In the first watch, the second watch, and in the third watch. And when we looked at in Luke, those watches are not uh, the watch of the day, but it's a watch for His coming. It's God speaking to us in a parable form saying, the first watch is when the shout came. It didn't say it was the first, but the second one, that's when Brother Jackson. And that caused us to watch a little bit more closely again. And, it, and the Lord saying, more or less be prepared. You don't know whether it would come in the first watch, the second watch, or the third. It's coming for the bride. As we stand here, we are now in that third watch. Whether you believe it or not, it's there. Israel's getting ready for our warfare. And there's a warfare going on in the bride now. Brothers, do you think, what do you think about this? Uh, uh, well, I, th- I think we'll, we'll ha- trying to manipulate God's program. Shame on you. You feel good preaching a message like this? I'd rather not. Sometime I wish Brother Jim would have never said if, he'd, if something would happen to him that you step in. The Holy Spirit pushes you. It doesn't leave you alone. You don't get a revelation every minute every time there's something comes up. The great exceeding army, is that of God or of the devil? Seven women to one man, is that of God or of the devil? The two days of Hosea and the great sage are the same, is that of God or of the devil? It's no sense hiding behind the bush and trying to be nice and, well, you'll work it out. God will just bring things around. It never does. Now, I've preached enough for one week. That's it. We have some serious thinking. Not just thinking, but getting on our knees knowing what the Holy Ghost. If these revelations are true... They'll stand the test of time. If they're false, God will bring a word that'll kill that thing. That's how God works. Can you change the mind of the Branham people? No. Can you change those that has just stuck around with what Brother Jackson says? No. It takes God, and they have to hear from heaven, from Him, and know what's happening in their day. They have to know that, what is that increase? But they got blinders on. We've, we stain with the message. I know you have the message. But you don't have what's gone now. I said more than I should have. But if I didn't tell you the truth, try to pussyfoot around, You still love the Lord? There might be few here tonight. Let's just stand. Have musicians come. Lord, I realize that we're living in an hour. Lord, it's your spirit that's moving and pushing us to a certain climax. But that will be in your time, Lord. Lord, I've done the best I could to try to show the picture of what's happening in this hour. Now, Lord, I just pray, use the words that were spoken as you would see fit. Yes, my, yes Lord, my heart reaches out that we may all come to see the same thing. 
But you're the one that does the calling. You're the one that does the leading. I commit the service in your hands. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Can you see it? We'll tell of his love that he did on Calvary for you and I. But aren't we to tell of his love what he gave us in this hour? No, it's not concerning being saved again. But his love that he sent his word that this bride can be fully dressed. Come to her completion. Praise the Lord. Where could we go? <laughs> Except the Lord. Just like the Pharisees of old, when they heard Jesus speaking, the reason that they refused him, he didn't come like the prophets of old saying, Thus says the Lord, I, the Lord speaketh unto thee in, in that manner. He just spoke the words directly. They didn't recognize the voice. In this hour, the same. Him that speaketh from heaven. We need to know. We need to hear. God will vindicate true revelations and truth. Does any man so perfect can't make a mistake? There's only one that was like that. It was the Lord Jesus Christ. So no servant is above being making mistakes. God allowed Brother Brian to say a dual statement to throw people off. God allowed Brother Jackson to say certain things to test that generation. Do you think it's going to be any different in this hour? I'm going to stop. You... The man that's, yeah, that didn't have the wedding garment. Because the reason he doesn't have the wedding garment because he was not listening to the voice for his day and his hour. That's why he does. He went in, but he went in because he heard a message. He knew there was a wedding taking place. It was, it was what was delivered, and he lived in the past. God is holding this generation, the people in this hour, not what you heard past, because that generation was judged by those things. There was a test on those in that hour. When in the hour we're living in now, God has brought things on ground. And that is the major test right now. Can you see it? That's the test. And what it does when it's how God allows well, it talks about the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, even dividing the marrow of the bones. God knows what's in the heart of each one. We may say, oh, I, I'm walking with the Lord. I have, I have truth. But God's going to put that to the test. Hindsight is twenty twenty, And the test always is when God brings something fresh on ground. What are you going to do with the word? I don't want to start preaching again. And I know it's... Lord, forgive me, but... I'd rather not... I would have rather stayed home than try and preach this message this morning. But... It is what it is. Let's just stand. Brother Ray. Heavenly... Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time of being in your presence. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. Heavenly Father, as you bring us forward, we, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would just be with each one of us. 
in our times, Lord, in our mind, as we look to you, we just pray, Father, that you would strengthen our inner being with your word for this time. Heavenly Father, we just pray that you would dismiss your children now with your blessing, that your will be done in all things. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.